Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at the Beauty and the Beast mini series featuring Allison Blair, the Dazzler, and Hank McCoy, the Beast from the X Men and the Avengers. This is the blue furry version. This is a great mini series from 1984. Very excited to show it to you today. So please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button. I'm going to cue the intro and I'll be right back. It's Troy TV. All right, so here we go. This was kind of a strange one, and at the time, I was super young and super into Dazzler. I loved her so much, so I was really excited when they gave her a little Dazzler love and came out with this mini miniseries. Um, such an obvious thing, Beauty and the Beast. I guess you want to use the title Beauty and the Beast. You have a character named Beast, so you need a beauty. So let's throw in Dazzler. She doesn't get a lot of play. Why not? And also, um, these gorgeous covers by Bill Sienkiewicz. At the time, Bill Sienkiewicz was doing really, really beautiful, amazing, um, full-painted covers for Dazzler. So they tapped him to do these covers for the Beauty and the Beast miniseries. And they're just pen and ink drawings, and it's so much fun. I love uh, Bill Sienkiewicz's pen and ink work. I love his paintings. I love when he slaps circuitry and wires and garbage and lace and dead flowers and whatever the hell else he wants to on a board and calls it art because it's always freaking amazing so let's get right into it um marvel sort of uh discovered the secret sauce and like once they discovered that mini series were kind of lucrative the floodgates open and there were all kinds of mini series going on and Beauty and the Beast was one of them. Issue one here, we got this great cover of Beast holding Dazzler in full glow and we've got Dr. Doom in the background. It's like, wow, Dr. Doom, right? But if you read the Dazzler series, you know that um, Dazzler faced off against Dr. Doom quite often. And I think that was writer uh, Danny Fingeritz effort to make her sort of relevant in the Marvel Universe and not just have her be the fr throwaway disco character. So written by Anne Nascente, that is a good sign right away. I loved her run on uh, Daredevil with John Romita Jr., um, Don Perlin pencils, I think I know him from The Defenders, Kim DeMolder on inks, Joe Rosen letters, George Russo's colors, Michael Higgins editor, and Jim Shooter is the chief beautiful splash page of Dr. Doom in his, you know, natural uh, habitat here. Stanley presents Beauty and the Beast number one. Got a great ad for the Mario Brothers Atari game here. And whoa, you guys, I mean, this is my speed right here, like jumping from one plank to another and like me having a nervous breakdown every time I'm coming to this edge, like give me Donkey Kong, give me Pitfall Harry, Activision, um, Pac-Man, Qbert, old school like that. Make a total fool out of myself every time I play modern uh, video games, but I do love them because you get to kick each other's butt and that's always fun. The Hollywood sign, love it. Beast is so much fun. I love this version of the Beast. He's just like totally fun. You can tell he loves being the Beast. He's blue, he's furry, he looks cool. Loved him in the Avengers as the Beast. Don't know what he's doing here. I love these great, so he's at the Hollywood Wax Museum. And I love it. I live in Hollywood. Well, I live in West Hollywood, but I live in LA. So this is like all familiar to me, the Chinese theater. He's at the Wax Museum. They do have Marilyn outside. I think they have to push her inside on a hot day so she doesn't melt. It's a good likeness of Indiana Jones and Vincent Price there. Lots of fun. I think that Don Perlin either did his homework or spent time on Hollywood Boulevard. So, by the way, the thing that the biggest disappointment about Los Angeles, you should know if you ever come here, um, is that people go to the Hollywood Walk of Fame and they're expecting to see like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie hanging out, just giving autographs and stuff. Let me tell you, not so much. It's a bunch of uh, creepy, uh, underhanded, CD people dressed in costumes, hanging out, forcing people to get 
auto, like pay for pictures with them and like stinky, nasty costumes. And um, there was even an incident where a guy named like who dressed up like Freddy Krueger accidentally stabbed somebody. I mean, come on. My friend Sylvia stalks. There's like a fat Spider-Man. I'm not fat shaming at all. It's just that regular Spider-Man isn't fat and there's a fat Spider-Man. So it's kind of funny to see because his costume is pretty authentic otherwise. So I would love to see that in the comic book, like Peter Parker, you know, because he's like so real and down to earth. Like, <laughs> like what if during COVID he was just like, oh my God, I can't take it just like everybody else. I'm collecting unemployment from the bugle. I gained 30 pounds, whatever. But then I got to dust off my cha-cha heels and go out and fight crime and uh, be fat, fat Spider-Man. So that would be fun. I haven't read this in forever, you guys. So no spoilers here. We're basically just looking at the art as I do sometimes since I love the art so much. Oh my God, Saturday morning cartoons, my favorite thing ever. Um, this doesn't look like a particularly strong batch, but it seems like every other cartoon is a winner. Snorks, I was down with the Snorks. Smurfs, of course. Alvin and the Chipmunks, yes. One to grow on. Still live by those, uh, um, the ethos of one to grow on. Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Interestingly, Firestar is not in the ad, and I'm wondering if it's because they don't want a flaming <laughs> character to um, influence uh, kids to set themselves on fire, which I guess was an issue with the Human Torch. And John Byrne even did a story on it called Hero, one of his favorite stories and one of my favorite stories from Fantastic Four. Um, you know, you're getting married in a chainmail wedding dress. What could go wrong? At least you're prepared. I don't know. The art isn't super exciting. It looks super serviceable. I remember like not being like completely in love with this series, but not hating it either. I mean, I think I have to do like a Dazzler retrospective because I remember never being excited about the art there and probably being more excited about it now as my art um, choices or art tastes have improved. And I love this so much. John Byrne ad Alpha Flight for Marvel subscri comic book subscriptions. I love that he's just holding the gals in his hands and uh, there's little Puck as a sidekick. Alpha Flight, I love you so much. I could kiss you. That was issue one of Beauty and the Beast of this four issue miniseries. Another great um, cover. I don't know, Just there's just something so visceral and exciting and uh, just, I could just look at Bill Sankovich's art all day long. So, Anna Senti, Don Perlin, Kim DeMolder, Joe Rosen, Petra Scottis. We lost George Rosus as the colorist, but Petra Scottis will do just fine. Allison's glowing. I'm thinking maybe she can't control her powers at this point. And for the person, the five people watching who have probably committed this uh, limited series to memory, I'm sorry. I should have read it in advance. This looks like the kid from uh, the end of the Spider-Woman comic book, but don't quote me on that. This is actually looking pretty cool, and I love Anna Senti's work. So this is, I like to, the part of the reason I do these shows is to like inspire people to read comics and seek out comics, like maybe of their favorite characters. Like if you're a Dazzler fan and you didn't know this existed, after watching this, I'm sure you're going to want to run out and buy this mini series just so you can see what's up and what happened and all that jazz. And apparently a lot is happening. I mean, this is like some epic crap here. And the Senti um, was never afraid to sort of just go off the deep end and just like really go for it with her writing. And I've always liked her writing. This cover is particularly exciting for me. I love this cover for some reason. The colors are pretty amazing and I don't know, it's just cool. I love Bill Sienkiewicz's just little flourishes, like the action lines he does and things. He started out as a major Neil Adams clone, even self-called and um, developed into this crazy style, which uh, I'm gonna try to think of uh, the artist uh, that I was introduced to, who he has 
even more influenced by than uh, Neil Adams. And it's kind of crazy once you uh, see the artist that uh, he is influenced by, because it's pretty close to a lot of his painting work and stuff. Um, feel free to chime in if you remember, because God knows I can't right now. Anyway, Cloak and Dagger, love this so much. Now in their own bi-monthly comic. I think bi-monthly comics is such a great idea. Like it gives enough time, I feel, to sort of give the uh, art team a chance to A, do a good job and B, stick together and sort of continue. Like time flies by so fast anymore. I'm willing to wait 60 days to have a great story by a consistent storytelling team. And I think that's one of the big problems with Marvel and DC anymore is like a new series will start. And like, like I remember uh, when Brian Michael Bendis and Legion of Superheroes uh, and Ryan Sook and I was like, oh yeah, this is my chance. Love those creators. Um, you know, uh, never got on the Legion tip and maybe this is my time. But then, you know, he usually only draws the first two or three issues and by half an issue, you're getting a fill-in artist. And I don't know, it just loses its momentum for me. And it's always a disappointment. Rocket Raccoon, I did not have that. And I wish I did. My brother had it and I think I read his, but lots of fun. Bill Mantlo, Mike Mignola, Mike Mignola, Mike freaking Hellboy Mignola did the first Rocket Raccoon series. How do you like that? In case you didn't know, inked by amiable Al Gordon. Back at the theater, look at you, look at you. You are the best, my man. You are going places. <laughs> How fun. Alison Blair, culturally appropriating by dressing up by like the Indian from YMCA. <laughs> See, there's, there, there's my proof that this is the kid from Spider Woman. Remember when Spider Woman ended, she had all these great like villains she was going against like Daddy Long Legs and Gypsy Moth and this baseball kid with the white curly hair. I don't know. I mean, this could easily be, is there an omnibus of this? I doubt it. Maybe a hardcover. I don't know if it warrants it. This isn't really, you know, one of the most tips and ways to prevent. Oh my goodness. Power Pack and Spider-Man. I mean, you know, that's kind of good that they did these PSA books. I wonder how effectual they were, but... I don't know, pretty sad that you can't even say that in a YouTube video anymore without getting flagged. So not gonna do it, not worth it. Issue three. All right, let's move on to the fourth and final installment of Beauty and the Beast. Another great cover. Love Bill Sankiewicz's covers. Love that this little inch of zip tone there, fantastic. Uh, Anna Senti, Don Perlin, Kim DeMolder, Joe Rosen, Petra Scott Tease. Okay, so we're still doing just fine. Isn't that amazing, guys? Four issues in, and we've only had one major change in the artistic creative team. It's the end of the world, and I feel fine. Dr. Doom, Dr. Doom. It's so funny, why would he even waste his time with Dazzler? But... I guess he had to give the Fantastic Four a break for a hot minute. I do. I am jo enjoying Don Perlin's art. I think he's just a good classic comic book storyteller. That's kind of a, a niche, or not really a niche, but like a category I like to put certain artists in who, you know, are very good artists, can tell a great story, um... And their style looks a little utilitarian, sort of house stylish, just like not super discernible from many other artists. But like I wouldn't instantly rec recognize his art as I would so many others. Like he doesn't have the distinctness of, you know, say a John Byrne, George Perez, Art Adams or somebody like that. But still a damn fine artist. Well, how do you like that, kids? That is Beauty and the Beast featuring Allison Dazzler Blair and Hank Beast McCoy from the X-Men, nay, Avengers. And I love it. I'm so glad I have this. If you guys want to read a fun series, I'm sure it's not super expensive if you can find it. 
I recommend it. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, hit like, share my content, and I'll bring you some more later. All right, thanks guys.